Good morning, everybody. So, so delightful to see each and every one of you with us today. We are just so, so glad you are here. And uh, if you're joining with us online, again, we say thank you. Thank you for being with us. Especially, we want to spend, uh, send a, a greeting to the families and the graduates today. We are so delighted that you have come to join us today. We just trust that it will be a rich day for you, and as, as well as us, to challenge us to, to reach out and, and care for your hearts and, and love you in Christ. Let me read for you from Psalms 103. These words, praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all of our sins, who heals all of our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like eagles, soaring again in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's give this time to him to encourage our lives and our hearts together. Father God, we thank you for these words here that David wrote. He realized how great your love truly is. And you see that all around us by your forgiveness, drawing us into your relationship, and even crowning us with your very love and grace so that we can soar again like eagles to the heights that you have desired for us. So as we spend some time looking at that today, we pray that our hearts will be open, our lives will be receptive to that great love, that great uh, faithfulness you've shown to us over and over again over these last many years, even as graduates, that you have sustained us. So be with our time, we ask it, in your name and for your sake. Amen. This time, Kelly, Kelly has some, some announcements to make in regard to community life. Kelly. Good morning, everybody, and those online. A um, couple announcements I wanted to quickly go through just because we have a very eventful morning, so I wanted to make sure we had enough time to focus on our seniors this year. The first announcement that I have is um, from Miracle Bible Camp. They wanted us to be aware of their auction that they're holding. Um, it starts Saturday, May 22nd, 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, the yard sale runs also... Uh, Friday morning, May 21st, from 9 a.m. to 3. Um, the Saturday time frame um, is going to be at 8, and then the funds raised are used for camp financial aid so that no child misses the opportunity to go to camp based on the cost. And then the additional funds are going to be used for projects for improvements around the camp. And then, so they said, come on over for a great deal and to help a great cause. And then if you want to seek more information, you can visit their website, miraclebible.com. And let's see here. Also, because June is going to be quickly upon us, um, save the dates on June 14th through the 18th for VBS. And then prayerfully consider helping out as well, because there are still um, positions that need um, leaders to be taking um, to control of those. So if your heart is lead for a missionary opportunity, um, there are forms out on the table in the foyer. A special offering is going to be held, uh, or is going to be taken for Trevor Rubenstein um, from Chosen People's Ministries. He is going to be our speaker at the end of the month on May 30th. And then, let's see here. Also, if um, you would like to make a suggestion for what the new name is going to be for EBC, or if you would like to also join on the committee to work through that process, um, there are sign-up sheets on the purple clipboards that are also out in the foyer. And another announcement, just so everyone is aware, um, the church is going to be changing their instant alert notification um, to... Uh, group cast, um, so it's no longer going to be Honeywell Instant Alert, it's going to be group cast notifications. And we need two main contacts for this, for setting up um, and also for training. So feel free to contact Vicki Tucker for more information and also if you're interested in becoming a main contact for that. And the last announcement that I have is also that we want to make sure that we are congratulating our very own 2021 high school graduates. Um, Dominic, Evan, Nick, Sam, Bailey, Kyle, and Brock. I didn't say last names because I'm really bad at pronouncing them. So, and please stay after church today um, for a reception that's going to be held directly behind you um, in the fellowship hall. Uh, next, it is Miss Joanne for a special announcement for our senior graduates. Thank you.
Good morning. As I looked over the names of our graduates, there's not one on this list that I have not been blessed by, either in Sunday school, in kids club, in fusion. These guys, they're a good class. You, you parents should be really, really proud of them. I didn't think I was gonna get emotional. Um, again, they, uh, they are an exceptional group. Um, and we wanted, to, we wanted to honor them. Um, so when I call your name, please come up. And uh, there are more gifts in the back, but we're just going to give you um, a small one now. Dom? Don't worry, you'll be joined by others. It'll only be uncomfortable for a minute. Uh, will I stay up here? Yeah, please. Nick. See, now you have your cohort with yeah. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Evan. He's working. He's working. Okay, we'll give you his. Kyle. Bailey. We got the whole cheering section over here. <laughs> you could applaud if you want. We're not in the school gymnasium. It's good to get excited about something once in a while. Brock. Oh. And Sam. You had the most beautiful brown eyes all through Kids Club. I just loved your, <laughs> sorry for, sorry for embarrassing you. Um, we just really wanted to um, just congratulate these guys. Like I said, they're an exceptional group. Um, there's only one or two I ever had problems with, but <laughs> they'll rename, they will remain nameless. Speak to me later, parents. Um, would you please join your hearts with mine and let's pray for them. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you that we can celebrate um, these young graduates. And Lord, whether their path takes them to the military, to higher education, to VOTEC, or to just the working field, we pray that you would honor um, and bless their futures, that they would continually seek your leading and your guidance in the path that they choose. And Lord, let them be a light in the circle that is going to be around them and shine brightly for you. Be with them, bless them, and keep them safe. We pray this in your holy and your powerful name and all God's children said. Amen. Thank you guys. Enjoy your slideshow.
Oh, what a nice tribute to, uh, to our graduates. It's hard to believe you guys grew up that fast. It's, it just seemed like not too long ago you were just little tykes running around, but uh, time goes by fast. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, hard to believe we're in the middle of May and graduation time nearly already. It's, uh, like I said, time certainly does fly by. Kind of nice to see that our governor has relaxed our uh, mask mandate too. Now I can see all your smiling faces out there. It's, uh, it's good to see. Uh, before praying, I wanted to comment on a passage of scripture that Pastor used uh, in his message last week from Ruth chapter 2. It was a good message with some really good lessons for all of us, uh, but a particular verse really stuck with me and I pondered about it and thought about it this week. If you recall the story, uh, Ruth was a foreigner and a, a stranger in the land of Israel, and Boaz was a rich man in, in Israel, and, and he uh, showed her favor. And the verse was in, in uh, chapter 2, verse 10, where it says, At this, referring to Ruth, At this she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, Why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner. And you know, and I thought the grace of God just sh really shines through in abundance in that simple verse. And I asked God the same thing about myself. Why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me a sinner? What an incredible testimony to the grace and mercy of God to show favor to unclean people like us. You know, God's love and grace are truly beyond comprehension, aren't they? With that, let's go to prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so very thankful for your grace and mercy and love to mankind that sent your son Jesus to pay the penalty for our sin that we rightly deserve to pay ourselves. It is truly a gift that is amazing and available for all of mankind. For those who choose to believe in Jesus as their savior, we are placed into your family, given a royal status as your children, and rescued from an eternity in hell, away from everything that is good, holy, and righteous. So we worship you and offer our praises to you, and thank you for your love, your kindness, your mercy, your grace, that bought our redemption from the slave market of sin. And I pray for anyone here today that has not made that decision to trust in Jesus as their personal savior. May today be that day that you make that all important decision. Remember, after you die, it's too late. So please, please do it today. Thank you, Father, that you are a faithful God that will never leave us or abandon us, and you are always looking out for our best interests. Holy Father, there are many, many needs in our congregation and amongst your people. Some of them are known and some are unknown, unspoken. For those who are suffering with health needs, spiritual, physical, and mental. For those who are hurting due to a loss of a loved one. In addition, there are many who are lonely. We humbly ask for your comforting, healing touch in all of their lives. Lord, thank you for this church and those who serve and attend. We ask for wisdom for the search committee and that you would lead the right man to become our new pastor. We thank you for Pastor Deppa and Joan, the elders, the CLT and their families, and all of the numerous ministry teams here at EBC. We ask your blessings upon them, ask that you would keep them strong and secure in their faith. And we look to you, Lord, for divine wisdom and guidance. Father, we remember our persecuted family around the world who are hated by the world and suffering because they love you. We ask for your protective hand over them. We also lift up our missionaries, and we ask that you would bless and protect them. And we specifically pray for the Danielsons as they serve up in Lake of the Woods amongst the native people up there. May you encourage them and bless them with much fruit, Lord. We also ask that you would put your protective hand over our partners serving over in Israel and the Jewish people as they endure rocket attacks from terrorist groups like Hamas 
We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Father, we give pause and thank you for the freedom and prosperity that we enjoy in this nation and the privilege of gathering freely together to openly worship you. We pray that you would use us and other believers to bring revival to our land. Thank you for all your churches and all your faithful people. Please protect us and guide our feet in right paths that are pleasing to you. Thank you for our graduates, and we ask your blessing upon them as they prepare for their next season of life. Thank you for all of those who serve in law enforcement and the military. May you put your protective hand over them as they work to keep us safe on a daily basis. Lord, we ask that you would restrain the dark forces of evil, both demonic and human, that are assaulting our country and the world. Lord, we want to praise and thank you once again for our great salvation, and we remember and echo the words that the Apostle John wrote in Revelation. Worthy are you, our Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. And I pray that in Christ's name. Amen. We invite you all to stand and sing with us. Desire and I long to worship thee. 
could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. I'd like to be looking at uh, Ruth number three today, chapter three of the book of Ruth. We may think, what does this book on a lady speak to us? Especially when we are here today to respect our graduates, give them honor, appreciate all that they've accomplished and honor them as well as their families as they were behind them and strengthening them. The thing that is interesting about Ruth is that she was a young lady also. 
She had many things that she herself was facing with decisions that she had to make in regard to living a life that would be pleasing to God and God alone. And we need to ask some questions of ourselves in the time remaining. What does that kind of look like? What is entailed in us being a people that is living in a definite different world in which we are living today? A culture in which you and I know that it's bringing an assault on all the biblical truths to destroy a person's individuality as a person, confuse our own children and our own teens throughout the culture, the social media, as well as the indoctrination that we find in our public school systems around and about. This is the so-called what they call progressive Christianity. That some way and somehow advances the causes of love and grace. It's entailed with that. It's the banner. It wants to make it look good when in reality there are some truths here that are being very undermining within the biblical scriptures. In fact, the truths of God's word is redefined oftentimes ignored within our own given culture. And so it becomes very difficult to begin to somehow, some way, understand the blur that we see happening and transpiring. It's very, very confusing to us. It's like having shades on that begin to distort the whole picture before us. And we're somehow trying to figure our way through this maze of differences, but we're not grasping it. We're not seeing it. We don't realize what it is doing to undermine the very essence of who we are as a person. Because everyone here wants to be seen and heard. Everyone. From those in the nursing home, to those in junior high, to those sitting out in the playground, they want to be recognized as a person. And we somehow begin to reach out to them through our culture and our society and begins to undermine the very being we are because the truth is removed. And we're trying to find ourselves in all kinds of areas of life rather than in the Creator who made us and designed us after Himself. So here in Ruth chapter 3, we like to begin to take a look at that together and understand some basic truths that will help us unpack what it means to live to please God in a world of deception around us. And Ruth was one who was very familiar. This is what we read here. One day Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you where you will be well provided for. Now Boaz, with whose woman you have worked, is a relative of ours. Tonight he will be willowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash, put on your perfume, and get dressed in your best clothes. Go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know that you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. And when he lies down, note the place where he lies and go. Uncover his feet, lie down, and he will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down in the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached him quietly, uncovered his feet, and lied down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man, and he turned, and there there was a, a, a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant, Ruth, he said. Spread your corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. You see that? She was living in a foreign country in Bethlehem. And it's the first time she acknowledged that she felt like she was a part of family. He said, the Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. And the kindness is greater than that you have shown to me early." You, have, you could have run with younger men, which are richer, rich and poor, whether rich or poor, and now, my daughter, 
don't be afraid. I will do for you all that you ask. And all the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character, although it's true that I am a guarding redeemer of our family. There is another who is more close related than I. Stay here tonight, and in the morning, I will go to him and do my duty as your guardian redeemer and see if he will become that redeemer. And if he does, good. He will redeem you. But if he will not, as surely as the Lord's live, I will do it. Lie here until morning. So she lied at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognized. And he said, no, no one must know that the woman came to the threshing floor. And he said to her, bring me your shawl you are wearing and hold it out. And when she did so, he poured into it six measures of barley and placed a bundle on her. And then he went back to the room. And when Ruth came to the mother-in-law and Naomi asked, how did it go, my daughter? She told them everything that Boaz had done for her and added, he gave me six measures of barley saying, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi responded, of course, to, to Ruth and says, wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens, for the man will not rest until the matter is settled. Living to please God. Here is a gal who lived in a culture and society very familiar and similar to what we have today. It was a society in which everyone did as they pleased within their own eyes that set the agenda for life. And here is a gal who is willing to begin to look at this whole area, this deception, and she wanted to simply to please God as God in her life in the midst of a culture that was drawing her in many different directions than the direction upward. And there are three things that I find remarkable about this lady that just stand out. And the first of these you're going to find in this passage of Scripture is that there we go. <clears throat> is that she first of all followed trustworthy advice that was in line with God's truth. She secondly was a gal who guarded herself as an individual with integrity when nobody was watching. And he was a gal who had a godly individual, a person within her life that was gracious and mercy enough to hold her accountable. See, Naomi, the mother-in-law, wanted the best for Ruth. She didn't live her life for herself, but she lived her life to pour into this young lady, the Moabite, who maybe just years earlier buried her husband, made a travel down to Bethlehem, was sneered at and ridiculed, was pointed out as that Moabite. She comes from the other side of the fence. Rejected. And here Naomi understood this little girl's heart. Wanting someone to find her as a person and value her as an individual. You begin to look at the artwork in that particular culture and you'll discover that all the children, generally speaking, when you look at the artwork itself, the children are standing way in the back. You can hardly see them. They're saying they're unvaluable to us. However, when Hitler stepped into his realm, he says, if we gain the youth, we gain the world. So that means we need to get rid of the older people so we can just concentrate on somehow getting into the minds of these young children. Because if we possess the youth, we gain the world. And here was a mother-in-law who realized that she needed to have a girl on her hands who needed to marry within the terms that God had written in his word. And so she turns and tells her very clearly, Malboaz, you know, he, the one you work for, the, the gals you followed, okay, he's a relative of ours. And tonight, he's going to be willowing wheat. And it was a great time of harvest, a great time of joy, a great time of festivity. Why? The climax of the harvest was over. And they were celebrating 
at that particular point. Wash yourself, put on perfume, dress in your best, and urging her to put that armor garment, that outer garment on her to conceal her identity as well as keep the night chilly air off of her. Go down to the threshing floor and, and don't let him know that you are there until he finished eating and drinking. She knew that this was a very public place. A place where oftentimes the, the sexual encounters often took place. And she was cautioning her very distinctly. When he lies down, note where he's lying down. Just uncover his feet. That is it. There is no suggestive idea at this particular point. No sexual advancement at all. Just remove off his feet and lay at his feet. That is it. That was a mother-in-law's advice to this young gal. A trusted resource who was looking at the Word of God to help her to realize that there are many, many voices, even in Ruth's day, that were somehow drawing her out to express herself in ways that were totally contrary to the will of God. And God was encouraging her through this gal, Naomi, to stay true to the Word of God. Don't become indoctrinated. Don't listen to the media around you or the culture because it's going to mislead you from the counsel of God himself. God brings our families together, our moms and dads, not to inhibit us, which sometimes we may think they are. They're putting cold water on our dreams, but they're really caring about the me, the real person inside of us. And God is using somebody who is close to us that truly cares for us because they understand what you are facing. And it's more devastating than a 45 to your head. It can destroy the person for eternity. God is reaching out. And here, Ruth trusted this gal's sound device. Why? Because it was in line with the biblical truth. And it said to Ruth, I truly care. In fact, it was her who first said, when she responds to Boaz, since you are my guardian redeemer of O-U-R, our family. He was the gal who realized the first in her life that she was valued as a person, as an individual. And it totally changed her perspective on life because it led her to guard her integrity in the midst of a tender moment. When she stepped into that realm and interacted with this man, all she could hear when she entered that scene was the snoring of men. After a long day's work, and a good, healthy meal. So she went and just removed the end of the blanket from his feet, and right away he was startled. It was a simple way of proposing that maybe I should be part of the family permanently. A pre hey, can we talk about this relationship a little further? And immediately Boaz steps up. Nobody watching. The lights are all out. And he turns around and he says, I don't want to do anything to harm you. You have a noble character. Integrity. Integrity. In fact, he says, you know, I, I don't want to overstep God's boundaries, but according to what I read it in the book of Numbers, that there is another kin who is closer to you than I, so if he so desires to step into this and do his responsibility and care for you, so be it. If he does not, notice what he says very clearly, as surely as God lives. The very God who gives me the breath that I'm breathing to speak to you, if this man will not do his responsibilities, I will do it. I will care for you. We're talking about a man in a Jewish community talking about caring for a person who is cross-culturally different from him, who was 
just earlier sneered at when walking into Jerusalem. He had her best at his heart. He had no interest in any kind of a sexual relationship with her. He wanted to connect in a way that she knew that God was the center of her life. In fact, the word garment that is used when Naomi says to her to go and put your best garment on is the same very Hebrew root that is used under his wings. I find that fascinating. See, God was already at work. He already had things entailed. As the night went away, he poured six, six measures of barley in her shawl that she had on. And she went home to meet Naomi. Here was a gal who not only had trustworthy advice, but she guarded herself at that very tender, tender moment. And as she stepped back into the presence of her mother-in-law, and some of us know that our mothers can be hard, but the mother-in-law can be difficult. I mean, we just like, whoa, 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 you know, two rams going at each other. And what's the first question a mother-in-law is going to ask? How did it go? And she told him everything that this man did. And even gave us food to eat. He was not concerned about her. He was concerned about them. She guarded herself. And their reputation as they dialogued was not in contradiction to the biblical truth that is radically different from the secularism of our socialistic society in which she lived today, that everyone did what their hearts dictated. Totally different. Totally different. Why? Because in God's truth and His Word, we have foundational reality of who we are in Jesus Christ. So let me ask you, who's keeping you accountable? Because sometimes we can get so involved in society that we lose the touch on ourselves. That's made very real to us when you go see your medical doctor. Uh, yeah, we checked all the basics here and... Um, I notice you're about 25 over. <laughs> huh? Well, I like those barbecue ribs. Actually, now, nah, boy. <sighs> Put them on that grill. Mm, I can just smell them. Ha! Huh. Or that nice big piece of salmon you just caught. Oh. <sniffs> you know, cooking it on that hickory plate, platter, you know, in the... Uh, oh, man, your mouth just starts wide. In fact, I had two of them. <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about that. The doc says, mm -hmm. and if you don't be careful, you're going to shortchange yourself and those who are most valuable to you. You see the point? We need people to get into our face. And I can say you, tell you honestly, I would not be here today unless people got into this guy's face on a weekly basis. Hey, Jerry, you said you're doing this and this and you're not doing this. What's the problem? I need it. And I thank God every day for those who hold me accountable for the truth of the Word of God within this man's heart. Are you? Because they are the ones who truly care for us. I cannot imagine what went through the mind of Peter when he turned and denied him and it says that Jesus looked 
didn't have to say a word. And I wonder what happened to that man who was a hard fisherman who would be out right this morning dropping a line to catch a walleye when he walked up and said, Peter, I want to use you again. I want to make you a fisher of men. Change his life. Here was a man who not only held him accountable, but here was a man, Jesus Christ, who was willing to walk with him through the ups and downs in life to bring out what it means to live a life that pleases God in a world that is deceiving thousands and hundreds. And the sad thing it is that the body of Christ today as a whole is just sitting on their lollies and not taking a stand. We may have to. We may have to. We can no more be silent against the cultural dynamics we see today in a world that is using socialistic deception to rob us of our identity in Jesus Christ. That's what's going on. When you pull that out of the picture, we are floundering in the water. And in just a matter of time, it's going to consume us. I, I was a lifeguard, believe it or not. Have you ever dealt with a drowning person? They don't want you around. Did you know that? You get more beat up by that person than anything. The very one who wants to give you life, you push away. Because you were driven by fear. You wonder if anybody cares. If anybody sees you, that you are part of a family. You so want to identify. And the very one that God sent, Jesus Christ, on our behalf, is the one who was standing there reaching out to us and willing to take the abuse of a cross and a sword in his side to shed his blood for you and me so that we can walk a life that pleases him as he himself lived before us. So that why? We can have sin forgiven and know that we are part of God's family. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Three truths. When we want to live to please God in these deceptive times, follow trustworthy His advice. Guard ourselves with that integrity. Keep it up there. When nobody's watching, follow God. And thank God for those who hold us accountable. What does that mean? We're all faced with deceptive secularism today, and we must choose either to live to please God or not. That's going to be our choice, one way or the other. The question is, is what do you choose? What do you choose? Because it will determine your future, as well as who you are as a person. As a person. As we come to this close of the service today, a very special time with our graduates, we'd like to close with a word of prayer, just asking God to encourage our lives, strengthen our lives in this area. But we also want to give thanks for the refreshments that we're going to enjoy together with our special guests today, our graduates and their families. And we are just so thankful that you are here today. So why don't we have a word of prayer. I'll have some closing comments, and then we'll be dismissed, okay? Let's pray. We want to say thank you, God. We want to thank you for the glimpse in this lady's life, Ruth, this morning. She, too, faced the, the radical socialism and secularism of her society that wanted to rob her of her own true identity in you. But I am so grateful, Father, that you rallied around her people of great value, family members, to help and find herself in you. And I just want to say thank you so very much. 
And maybe there is a young person here today who's kind of drifted. Or maybe a parent who's kind of drifted. And they would like to know somehow, some way, how they can have that same relationship that Ruth had with her Lord in their own personal lives. They can right where they sit. All Paul says is to call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. And by the name of Jesus, then he will come into your heart. He will forgive you of your sin. And he'll draw you back like he did with Peter to give him a hope and a future. A desire to walk with him and find his true identity within you. And we want to just thank you, thank you so very much, Father, that you yourself understand that you chose to live a life that was honoring to your Father, that was pleasing to you, that meant that within your world of your day, in the the radicalness of your society, you were still willing to go to the cross, give your life, and lo and behold, you are coming back to personally, personally, Welcome us back into your fold, into your family. And we want to say thank you for that. And Father, as we, in a short moment, to enjoy some refreshments, to enjoy connecting with these families, I just pray and ask that you will just have your hand in our time of fellowship following this service. And so, Father, today we want to choose to please you within this deceptive world in which we grow. We want to lift you up by your grace and knowledge and allow that to be the center of our lives as we grow in you. And to you, Father, we want to say, you are the Lord Jesus. And we want to glorify you and magnify you and lift you up forever. We give you the thanks and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We are so delighted that you have come and joined with us, whether you're here and present or whether you're listening online, we are so grateful. And those of you who are present with us, we want you to say, don't rush out. No, no, just take a moment. Just back there. We have things all set for you just to to talk to the graduates a little bit, talk to their families, see how we can come alongside them and help them through this time of transition. If you can't stay, well, we hope that we'll see you next week as well, okay? Click on, join us. We'd love to have you with us. Blessings upon you.